Amylogenesis is the process of enamel formation, which starts with the deposition of enamel matrix by ameloblasts, followed by the mineralization of the matrix. Enamel matrix essentially consists of organic material composed of two groups of proteins, namely amylogenins and non-amylogenins. Non-amylogenins consist of proteins enamelin, tuftelin, and ameloblastin. The amylogenins form the bulk of the enamel proteins comprising at least 90%. And once enamel is fully formed, organic material makes up only 4% of the enamel and the inorganic portion of enamel is composed of hydroxyapatite and comprises of 96% of enamel. Amylogenesis is divided into three stages referred to as the pre-secretory, the secretory and the maturation stages. The pre-secretory stage is the phase in which inner enamel epithelial cells differentiate to become ameloblasts that are ready for secretion. In the secretory stage, Amyloblasts secrete organic matrix comprising various enamel proteins, forming the entire enamel thickness. Amyloblasts carry out activities in the maturation stage that help in degradation of enamel matrix and subsequent replacement by minerals or inorganic material, thus completing the process of enamel formation. The pre-secretory stage is further subdivided into two phases, referred to as the morphogenetic phase and the differentiation phase. In the morphogenetic phase, the enamel organ is in the bell stage of root development and the shape of the crown is established. The inner enamel epithelial cells are low columnar or cuboidal cells with a central nucleus. Golga apparatus is located in the proximal portion of the cell, that is towards the statum intermedium, and the other cytoplasmic components are scattered across the cell. During the phase of differentiation, the inner enamel epithelium starts to differentiate to become an ameloblast. The cell elongates and becomes tall columnar and the nucleus that was previously at the center shifts proximally. Golgi complex shifts distally, that is towards the dental papilla and mitochondria that were scattered begin to cluster proximally. Now when these changes to the inner enamel epithelial cells are happening, there is simultaneous differentiation of the cells in the dental papilla to odontoblasts, thanks to the signaling molecules from the differentiating inner enamel epithelium. Odontoblasts begin to form dentine at the end of the differentiation phase. In summary, the inner enamel epithelial cell at the end of the pre-secretory stage differentiates to become an ameloblast with the nucleus polarized away from the dental papilla and most organelles located distally. Ameloblasts are attached to each other with the help of junctional complexes, both proximally as well as distally. Once the pre-dentine or the first layer of dentine is formed, it stimulates the ameloblasts to begin enamel formation. Now it has to be understood that this initial layer of dentine is necessary for stimulation of enamel formation just as it was necessary for the inner enamel epithelium to help in differentiation of dental papilla cells to odontoblast. In the secretory stage, ameloblasts develop a structure called the tombs process. Now, a fully developed tombs process is a distal extension or projection of the ameloblast consisting of a proximal portion and a distal portion. However, at the beginning of the secretory stage, tombs process has only a proximal portion. Ribosomes help in synthesizing proteins which are then packaged into secretory granules in the Golgi complex. These secretory granules containing enamel proteins are then secreted via the tombs process. The initial layer of enamel matrix is laid down on the mantle dentine and is mineralized immediately. Hence, this initial layer of enamel does not contain enamel rods. Now, as more enamel matrix is laid down, the ameloblast moves away from the enamel, with the tombs process developing an extension from the proximal portion. This extension is the distal portion of the tombs process and it keeps elongating as more enamel matrix is secreted with the distal portion penetrating the enamel. Now it has to be understood that rod and interrod enamel is a result of the tombs process. So let's understand how this happens. When the distal portion of the tombs process is developed, secretion of enamel happens from two sides. One is from the proximal portion of the tombs process and the other from the distal portion. The enamel matrix secreted by the proximal portion 
encircles or surrounds that enamel matrix secreted by the distal portion of the tomb's process. The enamel matrix secreted by the distal portion of the tomb's process forms the enamel rod and that which surrounds the rod is called the interrod enamel. As the enamel matrix continues to be secreted, not only does the distal portion of the tomb's process elongate, but also gradually becomes thinner and gets squeezed out of existence. Once this happens, there is a thin space at this junction between the rod and interrod enamel that is filled with organic material to form the enamel sheath. Once the distal portion of the tomb's process disappears, the ameloblast again resembles how it was initially and thus the last increment of enamel formed has no enamel rods. Hence it has to be understood that the final enamel is composed of rod interrod containing enamel squeezed between two layers of rodless enamel. The maturation phase of amylogenesis consists of a transitional phase and a maturation proper phase. Before the enamel matrix could mineralize and mature, there is a brief transitional phase where ameloblasts reduce in height and volume. Also, ameloblasts undergo programmed cell death or apoptosis and there is approximately 25% reduction in the number of ameloblasts in this phase. The maturation phase is when the bulk of the proteins and water in the organic matrix are removed to be replaced by inorganic material. This is accomplished by a process called modulation. Modulation is a process of cyclic creation, loss and recreation of an invaginated, ruffle-ended apical surface. That is, ameloblasts cyclically alternate between having a ruffle-ended border and a smooth-ended border at the apical surface facing the enamel matrix. A ruffle-ended ameloblast possesses a tight distal junction and a smooth-ended ameloblast possesses a leaky distal junction. Ruffle-ended ameloblasts possesses enzymes like lysosomes, metalloproteinases and serine proteinases. And these enzymes are secreted via their ruffle-ended borders to degrade in bulk the proteins in the enamel matrix. Once the proteins degrade to small fragments of peptides, they escape and diffuse into ameloblasts via the leaky junctions of the smooth-ended ameloblasts. Ruffle-ended ameloblasts also show endocytic activity which help in endocytosis of the degraded peptides into the cell. When the enamel matrix is being degraded, the calcium binding proteins and calcium ATPases present in the ruffle-ended ameloblasts help in pumping calcium ions to the degrading enamel matrix in order to mineralize it and help in active crystal growth, thereby fully forming enamel.